Today I want to talk about how I converted a website that was performing very, very poorly with the Google Health metrics to a website that now reaches over 90 points on the Google speed test. Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam and in today's video I want to talk about how I converted a website from being a slow, not so good website in accordance to the Google Health metrics to a very good website that reaches uh, uh, yeah, mostly 199 points on the Google speed test. I converted uh, old business websites that I have in from WordPress to Next.js. The uh, link to that video where I converted the website can be found in the description down below. But today, as I said, I want to talk about how I actually achieved that performance of yeah most of the pages. How, like you can see here, for example, reach a speed inside score of Google of more than 95. So usually they're quite high. You can see here even 100 on desktop, on 99 on mobile, and the same here, 94 on mobile and desktop 100. And you can see uh, this is the home page, for example, that almost ranks 100 mobile and desktop. Um, yeah, it's just a normal website. Uh, here, the blog article, of course, where performance is very important because it's SEO. You can see there are videos and images and quite a lot of text. So first I want to talk about why do we actually need a performant website. Of course, it's better for the user experience if the user clicks on a link and then it just pops up instead of having to load. And that is a very important factor for performing well in SEO. So if you have a blog or a business website that should perform well on SEO, then performance is a must. I have to say though, uh, performance, if you have a very performant website, that doesn't replace that your website has to have very valuable content for the user. But as us developers, we focus mostly on the performance of the website. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. So before I converted the website, the website was on WordPress and it scored around 30 points on this Google uh, Speed Insight test. And these were the complaints that Google had. In my opinion, uh, or in my experience, these are very typical complaints that usually you will find on the Speed Insight test if you don't have a very, very performant website. So in this video, I wanna go through all of those points. Uh, what's the issue? And of course, what is the solution to figuring out those issues? So you can also have a very, very performant website that of course, after that will have a very good SEO performance. If you're interested to see what the performance increase was of my websites converting from a very bad score to a very good score, make sure to subscribe. I will keep you updated with the development in my SEO performance um, in future videos. So, but now let's go into the first issue I see mostly with websites or websites of clients, for example, which are the images. Um, there's some things that are easy to fix and other things that are not so easy to fix with images. Um, here we have three of the, the complaints that Google has. It's just about images here. Defer off-screen images, serve images in next-gen formats and properly size images. So to properly size images, you can either upload already good images. So that means usually if it's a small image, not more than 50 kilobytes, if it's kind of one of those hero header images, it can be 120 kilobytes, but it shouldn't be more than that. If you want to automate that process, you can use services like Cloudinary, Cloudflare or Image EX. Those will resize and refit your images so your images are performing on your website. Then the other thing with defer off-screen images is actually if you have images below the above the fold, so that above the fold is the section of the website you see when you open it up. But when you scroll those images down below, don't have to be preloaded. So that's what defer off-screen images means. In other words, lazy loading images. If you work with Next.js, Next.js since version 10 has a very, very good next image component. So if you can use that next image component, for example, in my blog, I wasn't able to use that because the uh, HTML or in my example, the markdown was directly coming from the content or this uh, content management system from the CMS. There you can use solutions like lazy sizes, which is a a package you can download on npm for example that automatically finds the images and uh, lazy lazy loads them if they're not in the screen and that's actually one of the key points that you really can improve your performance on this seo score then another important thing is not just images also videos so if you have an iframe let's say from youtube or vimeo or something like that make sure to uh 
to lazy load those images as well. This, this can be done with um, lazy sizes as well with the package I talked uh, before, or you can build your own component where you only load the image in after uh, a user has clicked on the thumbnail. And for that, if you use YouTube, for example, they have a great thumbnail API where you can just preload the image first. And then if somebody clicks on that image, then actually load the, the iframe in. So then let's go to the next one, preload key requests and elim eliminate render blocking resources. Mostly this issue has to do with the fonts. Usually how the fonts are actually loaded in is a quite complex topic. I will link a video to a detailed description of Lee Rob in the description down below. But the solution is very, very easy. Next.js, they feature kind of a, a package or they're related with a package you can download from NPM, which is called add font source. So there you can actually download fonts you have to your um, repository, to your project, and then load them from your project instead of um, calling an API like it is with Google Fonts, for example. So if you um, encounter that issue, go to add font source, load or download your fonts there, and then these issues should be uh, gone. I was just able for a client of mine to now um, reduce a couple of seconds of his load time just with that little trick. Then another very common issue I see with a lot of pages, especially if they're WordPress, uh, is the initial server response time. Um, that usually has nothing to do with the website. It depends. I go to a, I get to a point why it could be uh, an issue on the website, but usually it's with your host. So especially if you use Next.js, try to use static generated pages. If you want to find out how you can generate the pages, I have a link or I have a video where the link to that is in the description down below as well. But use you use usually uh, generate or um, yeah generate static pages with the get static props method of Next.js. Yes. Um, and then if you where you host your website, try to do that on a CDN. This website, uh, in my example, is hosted on Vercel. They take care of everything there, so it's very, very good. There is the, the issue just doesn't appear because it's hosted on a CDN. But if you self-host, make sure that you try to host it on a CDN if you have static websites um, or static pages. Then another thing, if you use Next.js, don't do crazy server-side rendering stuff in the uh, server-side render methods like get static props or get server-side props of Next.js. And that brings me to the next uh, issue which I have with a client of mine uh, at the moment. Uh, we have an extremely complex backend and I have to do a lot of, lot of computing on um, on the server, which is very, very bad for performance because the server is actually the first request you have. So the, if that takes a long time, the page just won't show up. So it's actually the worst of those metrics that can be bad. But in a nutshell, make sure uh, that you host your website statically, that you have static pages and uh, to host those on a CDN if you can. And then of course, the thing I want to add here, try to server side render your pages and not client side render. But yeah, if you're watching this video and you're interested in Next, you most probably already know about that. Then another one, uh, another very common one uh, is remove unused uh, JavaScript. So this is very important and that brings me to a most probably the most important topic here. Have a good concept of the website or the project you're building. So no crazy features, um, which also like the good thing about that, if you don't have crazy features on your website, it's not just good for performance, but it's also good for user experience and the developer experience as well. So if you have a lightweight, minimalistic website, that's in most categories, that's the best thing you can do anyways. So try to have that with a great, great concept. Um, if you then have that great concept, you have to really think about what are the dependencies of your project. Here you can see the dependencies of the website. You can see there are uh, very few uh, dependencies I actually use. You can see here I use Tailwind, so I don't use something like Bootstrap or another design system. So make sure if you have the concept of your website ready, do you really need a design system or can you do uh, vanilla uh, CSS or something uh, very lightweight like Tailwind? I think um, that's very important. Of course, my, you might now think about, but you know what, if I um, use something like Bootstrap or uh, Chakra UI or something like that, 
they have uh, tree shaking. So they only um, will load in components that I actually use in my code. And of course that is true, but sometimes it doesn't work. So don't only depend on tree shaking. What I hear often is that people say, yeah, you can load in so many packages uh, or as many packages as you want. If you don't use a lot of those, tree shaking will get rid of it. But sometimes tree shaking doesn't work. If you want to know what tree shaking is, I'll link it in the description down below. But sometimes tree shaking doesn't work and then debugging uh, where exactly the issues is, is uh, a big, big hassle. So in the beginning, try not to use um, packages and really think about if you want to use the packages, if you really need it. I think that's the most important part of the um, remove unused JavaScript with the Next.js application. Another thing is also that you don't load some crazy heavy um, JavaScript package or script. So if you use something like Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics, they will be performant, of course. But especially ads are notoriously bad for performance uh, of your website um, and other heavy packages as well. Maybe you have some 3D animation with JavaScript or something like that. If you have a heavy package like that, uh, consider using dynamic imports, which is supported by Next. There you have to be a little bit careful how you do that to not get some weird bugs, but that's surely an option. So that's pretty much it as a summary. I would say have a bulletproof concept and really just take in what you need. Um, that's not just good for performance, but also for user experience and the developer experience as well. Um, another thing is make sure how you handle your media, so images and videos, that you defer them if they're below the first fault and um, that they're, uh, of course, correctly sized for your website. Which if you follow these couple of rules, 80% uh, actually is already done of having a performant website. Um, then you can really say as a developer, you have done whatever you can to help this website. And then it's pretty much uh, on uh, either your content uh, writing ability or on the content management systems side of uh, having great SEO success. Uh, I hope this video helped. If it did, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.